Hi friends, this is Joe. So James and I got together online this weekend and we recorded what you're about to see. And I was doing the edit and I was like, you know, we, we never actually got to the actual point. So jokingly, this episode is called Making Characters Backwards because James approaches character generation differently than I do. And that's because James isn't me and I'm not James. That's really all that means. But we joke around and we have fun with it. So don't take anything too seriously, especially when I say backwards. Although for the game in question, his approach was backwards. And for other games, his approach would be perfect and mine would be backwards. And that's because the overall message here is that not every game is made for every person and not every person is made for every game. So the example that we use a lot here in the episode you're about to see is Tristat DX, which is kind of the generic version of Big Eye, Small Mouth, uh, I think, third edition, second edition, second edition. Um, yeah, and that game isn't really well suited for James. It's awesomely suited for me. But there's other games that are suited for James and that for me, not really my thing. And then yet there's other games like Pathfinder would be one. Um, but any game with like big skill tree, you know, where you have to do this at this level. And then when you level up, you have to do this specific thing so that when you level up five levels from now, you can do some other thing. That's not my gig at all. But I have a friend, Dustin. That's totally him. He'll do that stuff all day long, in and out. So that's it. That's the message. Not every person is it made for every game. Not every game is made every person. <laughs> Not every game is made for every person. And that's nothing bad about the game, nothing bad about the person. It's just a matter of compatibility. The things have to be compatible with each other. That's it. So enjoy the video. Again, it's very tongue in cheek. We were just having a lot of fun with this. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Hi, friends. This is Joe. Today I'm joined by a very special guest. That guest is James, who's dressed as an old woman. Hi, James. Ah, how dare you, sir. <laughs> You're gonna I know. pay for that. Not, not the look you were going for. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. I am here uh, at your beck and request, sir. Um, it's an invite, actually. You were invited to be on the show. Um, for those watching on YouTube, by the way, uh, because I have a guest, I have earbuds in. Um, that way, his audio doesn't show up and echo and everything. Uh, likewise, he's wearing a headset. Um, it's life. Live with it. <laughs> um, for you listening on the podcast, you'll never even hear that. Anyway, so James, I'm looking here because my notes are here. So um, James is here because we are doing an episode about making characters backwards. And that's sort of a tongue-in-cheek way of saying that there's a right way to do characters, the way I do them, of course. And there's a wrong way, or a backwards way, which is the way that James does them. Uh, that's very tongue-in-cheek, of course. Um, but and this came I'm to light gonna... for... Go ahead. I'm going to disagree. I think his way is the wrong way and mine is the right way. But there are many ways to do the, the character justice. Mm, nope, there's there's only two, at least for the aspect we're talking about, right? Um, although you could say, yeah, there's a little hybrid space in between. Um, but anyway, uh, so this all came to light months ago. James and I did an episode where we were creating a thief. Um, I can't even remember what the point of that was we were each going to make a thief um and i can't remember with the why. same number we did we're doing nope the concept where we're doing characters with all the same scores but two different way two nope. different people nope. doing it see what the difference was no no nope i could swear because, that because nope because we use D D for that and this we were using tristat dx at least that's what we started to use and james was approaching this all backwards, and I will prove that in a second. Uh, and I, I just no, couldn't cope won't. with it anymore. <laughs> I, I will. I absolutely will. And um, 
And I was like, James, you're, you're making character backwards. It's like you get in the car and you're looking at all the places you can go rather than having your destination in mind before you get in the car. And that's really what it is. So the two points, at least, that we're, we're doing right now is that um, my way, the right way, <laughs> is to the have your way. character... To have your character concept in mind, to know what your character is going to be roughly, and then find all the game bits you need to create that character in that way in the game. The other way is to go through the book piece by piece by piece by piece by piece and say, what can I make? And that's the James way. Good summary? Well, I will. No, but we'll go with it. I'll go on with <laughs> two aspects that I, why I was going through the book. One, it was a game that I did not fully know. So I, I didn't know the mechanics like I do for other games. So I was trying to, I'll, I'll go into what I was doing. I was going through the books to find out what skills and ability did my character want to have. And I tend to want to know what all the abilities are. And then as I'm creating the characters, okay, I got 10 points. I can't have all these. What what am I willing to cut off from that list? So it's a system of, okay, I really want to fly, but I don't have the 10 points to fly. So that's off the list. And then continually going down the list until I get to the final concepts that fit within the numbers but comma <laughs> um you had told me we're gonna make a robin hood type character that was what you said i said i want him to be right. like robin hood and so my next question for you was what does that mean to you because different people have different thoughts of robin hood right to me robin hood is um a fairly good archer. He's not the best. He's about second best, right? Um, fairly good fighter. Not the best. About second best, right? He's uh, arrogant. He is... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Overconfident. Um, he believes that he knows best and he's going to do uh, what he wants, right? Uh, he's kind of charismatic, but not the most charismatic, right? He's like second at everything. In my mind, in your mind, that could be something completely different. But what I got back it, from you was point. was a list of abilities like flying, because that was in the book, and you thought it sounded cool. I'm like, Robin Hood doesn't fly. By the way, flying wasn't exactly one of them. It's just you no. said that as the example, so a so metaphor. We're, we're running with it, but it's like you. And you're just grabbing all these things. And a lot of them, I really got the impression that you were grabbing them because the name sounded cool and you didn't really know what they did. It's like you read the name. Yeah, that sounds cool. And you didn't read the description. I will say half guilty as that. I did read the description. And some of them, you're right. Um, I didn't know what it, did what it would do within the game construct that we were working with. I was not familiar with this game. <laughs> so I'm going to come to your defense because I have two reasons why I think you approach character generation backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Number one is if you're playing classic D&D, &D, old school D&D, &D, uh, and that is a lot of your background. You can't do concept first because you're going to roll the dice. And you're saying, yeah, I want to roll a thief, but then you roll a three in dex. It's not going to be a good thief character, right? And you're going to, oh, I rolled a three in dex, but an 18 in wisdom. Maybe that should be a cleric. Where am I going? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to say I agree with that. Yeah, when, when, we, when we started, you needed to roll the scores because you are also one of the people that you couldn't move the scores around. So 
you need to find out what your scores were to at least have an idea what you would be fairly good at. And in D&D, you had four choices of what you could be. Well, when you get into AD&D, it's right. a little more, but it's less than 10. So it's easy to make that list of 10 things and say, that's the one, right? There's not a whole lot of room for personalization there. Um, so that's one thing that I think programmed you to approach character generation in this way. The other thing I think is your, uh, I talk about a lot this, uh, on this show uh, when I talk about you, is uh, your analysis paralysis. When you're confronted with something open-ended, the sheer number of options there just overwhelms you. And you like, like little lists. Like when we were talking about the totems in the Etrugan clans, and you said, I don't like their list. You know, I want to be, you know, I want a wolf or a bear. And I'm like, it's there. It says mammal. They're, they're mammals. You just, this is better because you get to pick any mammal you want. And you're like, I want a list. Um, and that's just, you know, you psychologically. That's, that's not, you're bad or it I'm better than you. That's a different way of looking at the world there. I will agree on that. But I was also looking at a book with a much more American Indian concept. And when I think of the American Indian, it's, they do have the totem animals and they are not, they are much more to find in hawk, fox, wolf, bear. Right, and all those were on the That's list, right? I because, at it. because avian, that covers your hawk, your eagle, your owl. Mammal covers your fox, your bear, your wolf, and all that. It's just that in the clans of Etrugan, which is American Indian based, perhaps offensively so, um, it's it's open ended. It says, yeah, just just pick a mammal, but you want those specific lists because, like I said, I think when you have the whole world to pick from, you're like, where do I start? I start. I have the whole world, um, and whereas I look at that and, and I say, I make a freedom. List. <laughs> so and that's where I make the list and start cutting back. All right. I keep teasing this that I'm going to prove to you that your method is backwards. So this is the book. <laughs> this is the book. This is the TriStat DX book. Uh, we were using this because it's, it's freely available. It's legal, authorized. You can download it for free. And uh, so this is the, the steps they say how to make a character. And I will point out that in the book, step number two is develop your character outline. Use the game boundaries established through your talk with the GM to develop a rough character outline. Bada boom. And after that, you assign stats, assign attributes, and select skills. I see that. But, hmm. <laughs> so, well, that's where I said, so that's follow, where I said a Robin Hood type character. So following the rules in the book. <laughs> so I already had the concept. <laughs> yeah, but but you didn't have the concept. I had the idea, Robin Hood. So. Your, your concept was Robin Hood. That's why I was like, well, what does that mean? And you never gave me that answer. Instead, you just started throwing stuff at me. You didn't define the concept before you started doing things. The way to do is like, I want this, I want that, I want that, and that. Then you go look for those specific things in the book. You don't add more to that. You don't say flying. Yeah, it would well, be cool if you could fly. That's that's not your concept. <laughs> but I. But the idea is I, I want to know what's available. I just don't want to throw something that's not in the list onto this is what so, I want. So what do you do in something like Fudge or Fate, which this is my, my another reason why your method just is, is wrong. <laughs> so in Fudge and Fate and uh, Rhesus, there are no lists. It's pick what you want. Pick what I want. I want the world. <laughs> but that ain't gonna work for a game. I no, think. and so you got to be able to. Um. Yeah, and so we've been having fun with this. We've been having a lot of jokey fun. You know, the I'm right, you're wrong. Um, 
it does boil down to there's different ways uh, looking at the world. Although I think your method, <laughs> I think your method um, fails. That's a strong word. I was searching for a better word. Um, is less, less optimal. How's that? Your method is less optimal for more open-ended games. And TriStat DX is actually very open-ended, although it yeah. has these lists. The reason the lists are so big aren't, isn't to go through it and pick what you want. It's to, once you know what you want, to find the way to express that into game terms. And you were skipping that step. It always driving me crazy. <laughs> I think it's part of trying to cut down on you have to figure out what we have to do. And I was just doing a list and saying, oh, these are here so I can do these. So here's what I, here's, here's the abilities that I think. But, you but the have. thing, well, it wasn't. It was the abilities you thought were neat. <laughs> Because flying wasn't anything that Robin well, should have. <laughs> Robin Hood should have. <laughs> no. No. That wasn't one of them I picked. But like I said, it was a concept. But it's hard for me to just say something and let someone else create what Yeah, I but want. that wasn't going to be the thing. That's I was trying to get you to define what you wanted, and then we were going to find the game aspects that fit those things. But you wouldn't do that step and say what you wanted. Oh, I said what I wanted. It's just that I went to the list, and yes, they have these abilities. Let me do these abilities. But the thing, you can do almost anything in TriStat. So you don't, like I said, you don't worry about the list. You define it first, and then you find what you want in the list after you've defined it. And then you're like, oh, I have points left over. Let me find some other things. Yeah, that's okay then to browse with the list. Or you're like, uh, <laughs> I don't have enough points. Let me get rid of some stuff, which is more likely the case. Uh, so anyway, this has been very tongue-in-cheek. It's been very fun. Um, <laughs> but really, I guess the takeaway for this for any audience member is that there's, there's different ways to make a character. Um, we've talked about other ways before. Uh, random versus... Um, create uh, you're, you're, you're a random person I'm a create person and I think this comes down to the very same thing um, because you like those boundaries they make you feel secure you know you, you know okay these are what I can pick from that's cool and I like the freedom um, but with that much freedom you need to lay down that path first and I, I, I think it's all just the same thing. Because I like to create, I create. And because you like to, I don't know the other word, because you're still creating. I don't want to say you're not creating a character. You definitely are. Um, but I like to know where the lines are and know that I'm not stepping over them when I pick certain skills And you like certain abilities. decisions to be made for you. Um rather than having to choose. Mm. Uh, this is why you like equipment packs versus having to shop for equipment uh, because someone's already made those decisions for you. And when you shop for equipment, you're always afraid that you're going to make the wrong choice. You're going to leave out something you needed or you're going to buy stuff you didn't need. Whereas if you buy the equipment pack, you're like, well, that's just what came with the pack. It's not my fault. Well, it's, I'm going to go on to that a little bit more. It's more that I find it a pain to go through the list and pick every little thing out. I need the hammer. I need the spikes. I need the rope. I need the 10-foot pole. So you are right to some point on that. There are, to me, the equipment lists also speed up the game. Because I used to spend, when I was creating the character, I'd say at least 30 minutes just working on the because equipment you're, list. Because you're afraid Minimal. of <laughs> making the wrong choice, leaving out the thing you need, and yeah, I get it. Or, run, or running out of the um, coin. Yeah, Beginning, um, you ran out yeah, of the coin very fast. You're, you're not afraid of that. That's just going to happen. Although, well, that should be another episode. Um, so anyway, yeah, I keep trying to get back to this. The, the takeaway... Um, there are times when uh, uh, mechanics first, concept second makes sense. Uh, but in my mind, it's very limited to like D&D uh, &D and TNT and 
Gamma World, things where your character is created for you by a roll of the dice and stuff like that. I think anytime you're making a character, you you get a good sense of what that character is first, and then you go forward. James doesn't feel that way. I think that's a good takeaway. Yeah. And of course, James isn't going to be the only person like that. James will agree. James isn't the only person like that. So I'm not the only person. If you have other players like that in your group, slap them. No, don't slap them. Well, how about well, how about we throw this in for a poll? Uh, can you put a two discussion no. poll up and just say which ones and have everyone say I do my character system. We can just have way? people call in and tell us concept first or that concept first me. or mechanics first. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're going to wrap this up because we're just prattling now. This is the first of three episodes um, that are just loosely connected. It's kind of a, a series, but not. Uh, you can skip any of them and it'll make sense. It's just um, this episode I was talking about concept first next episode uh which james will not be on i will be making a character concept first i will uh show you my concept before i go in and make the mechanics of a character and then the third episode is um a way to get to know your character better um that i recently run across and it's kind of cool it's kind of neat and so that will be another episode using that character that we created using the method that i talked about here see they tie together but not really Ah, having said all that, I do thank you for joining me, James. Thank you for having me. And everyone else, thank you for listening. And until next time, happy gaming, happy life. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Take a Heat